Hey everybody, this is Sheldon with SNS Horseshoeing. Today I'll be bringing you along with me. We'll be working with the vet to get this horse shod. Kind of a little backstory on this horse. Several months ago, he came into the vet for keratoma surgery, which is a growth they get under the hoof wall, between the hoof wall and the coffin bone. So they had to remove that hoof wall to be able to gain access and remove the keratoma. Since then, as he's recovered, he kind of had some complications and they've had to go in and re-resect the hoof wall and, and try to figure out what was going on in there. So we've had kind of some ups and downs as, as he's been recovering. And I'll show you some of the pictures that I've taken in the past here in a second. Right here I'm going real slow, I'm trying to see how much hoof needs to be trimmed off and getting the foot flat and level and ready for the shoe. And then we'll go out to the anvil and make a shoe for him. But I, th I thought I'd show you some pictures real quick of some progress we had made in the past, got that foot to grow out. Then two weeks ago he started abscessing again and this is what it looked like two weeks ago. They had to go back in and resect it and try to look for what was causing it to abscess. So here we are out at the anvil, just starting making a toe bend on this, on this shoe. And then actually I'll modify the toe, you'll see here in a second, because he's got a piece missing there. I'm going to actually put a square toe on the shoe, which will relieve the leverage. Right there, you see I'm doing it, I had a round toe and now I'm taking it over the horn of the anvil and putting a square toe on it because I don't want leverage out there in front of the shoe to put any more pressure or anything on the, the part of the hoof wall that's missing and stuff so we can let that piece heal. And later on in the video I'll show you, I actually put a roll in the toe to again take, take off more leverage. And the shoe we'll be making today is called a heart bar. You can see the, the other branch of the shoe is already starting to take some shape there. So now I'm just getting this other branch ready. And I'll bring those two branches around and then I'll actually weld them in the middle. And what that creates there is it creates a frog plate. And so the frog, which is the, the triangular shaped piece of hoof tissue that you can see from the bottom view under the hoof. Um, so what I'm actually going to do here is his frog's going to be asking his frog to carry some of the weight to relieve some of the pressure off of the, the hoof wall that's compromised from, from the surgery. So there's some flux I'm getting putting on that frog plate as I weld those two pieces together. And the purpose of that is to get the impurities out of the weld so the weld's able to stick together. I would mentioned this in a previous video, but being able to weld in the forge is not a matter of who can hit the, the steel the hardest. And when I first started trying to weld, I would pull the metal out of the fire and I'd just go to whacking on it as hard as I could. Sparks would fly and then I, when I was done, the, the weld wasn't stuck together. It was kind of sprung apart and, and I kind of struggled with that. It's really, you got to be kind of tedious with it and just nice little taps and, and get that metal to stick together on the edges and then get the center to all stick together. So this step I'm doing here is called fullering. Um, it's making the crease down, down each side of the, the shoe and then the nail holes will go inside of the crease. And in the video I only show myself making one pass down each branch of the shoe, but in real time I make three or four passes down each branch of the shoe to make the fuller and look nice and crisp and get it deep enough. And I mentioned earlier in the video that I was going to put a roll on the toe, which is what I'm doing right here. You can see I'm kind of smashing down that toe, um, just put a nice roll into it so every time he steps he doesn't have to break over a sharp edge on the shoe. With the file there, I'm just taking all the imperfections out of it, taking all the sharp edges off the shoe and making it look nice. So here I'm punching nail holes. These are specific to the nails I'll be using. I do end up put, just putting three nail holes on each side. Um, in theory, I should just put exactly the amount of nails that I'm going to be using, um, which I am just using three nails in the whole shoe, just because that's the only place I there was enough foot to nail to. Um, if I was probably a little better at what I did, I would know exactly where the nails needed to be, but I just 
put some extra nail holes in there so I had options when I was at the foot. And this step's called Pritchlin. So when I stamp that head stamp in there, it leaves a little flat piece of metal in the bottom of the hole, then I Pritchill it out. And then use a back punch on the back side of the hole, which is what you see me doing right there to crispen up that hole and make it the perfect size and shape for the nail. The next step is to pull some side clips on this shoe, which in this case will serve two purposes. One of those is just helps to keep the shoe on better. And the main reason, specifically on this horse, why we're using them is to stabilize the front of the foot. Because the hoof wall is compromised, there'll be a clip on each side to help hold it together and stabilize it so we can finish healing. If you guys would like, maybe in a future video I could kind of explain the technique of pulling clips and how that works. If that's something you'd like me to do, just let me know in the comments down below the video. Now that I've got the shoe mostly ready for the horse, what I'm doing out here is hot fitting the shoe to the foot. People kind of get excited when they see that. They figure it hurts the horse. But you got to remember the horse's hoof is very similar to the part of the your own fingernail that you trim off. It doesn't have any feeling in it. And yeah, I could definitely do some damage if I'm not careful and I burn too deep for too long and I could get down to sensitive tissue, but that's not what I'm doing here. And if I did do that, the horse would definitely let me know. If, if I do anything to hurt them, they, they jump around and, and get pretty excited. So. Also on that same topic, you could see on the top of the frog, which is the part in the middle of the foot that's triangular, that the shoe did burn a little bit right there, which is what I'm looking for with this shoe. I want the frog to be in contact with the shoe, so then the frog can bear a little bit of the weight, so it takes pressure off the, the outside hoof wall, like I kind of talked about earlier. Um, you gotta be careful though, it's not a bunch of pressure. If you put a bunch of pressure on that frog, you'll make the horse go lame. You gotta put just enough little bit of pr passive pressure to take a little bit of the excess stress off the front of the foot. Appreciate you guys watching. That's our finished product for the day. And here in a second you'll see him kind of pick up his foot a little bit and you'll see how nice and easy that foot rolls forward. Right there you saw him do it, which is perfect. That's what we we're looking for with the square toe and then putting that roll on the front of the shoes. Also another part of the vet's prescription is we want us to put some extended heels on the back of that shoe which is why you can see so much of the shoe sticking out of the back of the foot there. I know there's a lot going on in this foot and shoe job so if you have any questions just go down to the comments and, and ask away and maybe between me and the other people watching we can get them answered for you. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.